Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and this video is just a quick update on the Ediest Bat server. I just wanted to give you an up-to-date view on how to install it, which has got easier than it may appear in some of my earlier videos, which were done when it wasn't quite as evolved as it is now. And also quickly just show you adapting one of the options in there, something I always do, which is to make 25p clips very quickly. So just a short video on an update on the latest with the bat server. Definitely worth having if you've got EDIUS 11. Of course, it doesn't work on other versions. So I've done a few videos on the bat server and basically it's a way of adding in extra stuff into EDIUS 11 that isn't there in the first place. It's taking advantage of something EDIUS 11 has got, which is the Chorus Hub, which also obviously can't be done in EDIUS 10 or anything else. And it's a really nice, useful add-on. It's not written by Grass Valley, it's written by somebody else. But like I said, it does add some really nice things for me. So for a start, installing it. Assuming you have used the links that you were given when you ordered EDIUS, you will have an EDIUS setup manager sitting there next to the clock. If you right click on that, then there will be a thing that says bat server panel. So even if it's not installed, it will say bat server panel and you click on it and then it brings up this dialogue which says, oh, bat server's not installed. Do you want to install it? Just follow the instructions and do what it says. So click on it. It will then open up an installation manager and go through, check a few things and then give you this dialog box. Now, once you get to this dialog box, you've got a list of different things here. I would tick these. You can see there's two options here for speech to text. So you can use either the NVIDIA card to do speech to text, or you can use the software or the Intel NPU. Uh, the Intel NPU is something you'll only find in modern processors. So this 285K has got an Intel NPU there. It's a specific processor or part of the processor for AI. To be honest, I haven't used that because I've been using the NVIDIA part of it. On this machine, I could use it. I haven't compared the speed on NPU versus the speed on NVIDIA, but I've got nice NVIDIA cards in all my machines and I'm quite happy with the speed of that. So you could tick it and put the NPU in or you could leave that off and just use NVIDIA. It really depends on what good graphics cards and processors you've got. I would also tick this one, QTMGC, which is my favorite way of deinterlacing stuff, which is a thing they put in there. So I tick that, click OK, let it do its job. It'll take a little bit of time. And by the way, you can get this running whilst you've got EDIUS open. So you could carry on doing some editing in EDIUS. And eventually it will finish and you'll have your BAT server installed. So a bit simpler than it was before. My previous videos, I talked about the BAT server. I talked about adding QTMGC as a separate thing. All in one place now, which is nice. Then once you've got it, it's a matter of putting in your own batch files. So what you do is you right click and say BAT server panel and it brings up the BAT server panel. And you can see I've got some things already here, like a speech to text, which has been put in in different languages. It says here whether they're in the bin or in the timeline. So for example, if I want to look for that speech to text, I go to a clip in the bin, I right click on it and down here you can see speech to text. There's also an add function there, which will get you straight back to this bat server. There's a couple of things they have here, which I really like. The ability to delete files. They're not ticked by default, which means they won't show up. But if you tick them, then suddenly they will. Now I can delete a file. You notice that I didn't restart anything. I just literally ticked it and then they pop up. And then there are other things you can add in. So I have done videos about this. I'm not going to go in depth into it, but literally you click on here and then you choose any of these things. The QTMGC ones are the ones I mentioned, which do deinterlacing and interlacing. So in fact, what this one will do is it will deinterlace stuff for you. And this one will actually take progressive stuff and actually interlace it. Does a much better job than EDIUS does on its own. There's useful stuff here, like being able to take subtitle file that you've created in EDIUS and then merging it with an MP4 file to make an MKV. So it's got some subtitles you can turn on and off. But I'm literally going to take that. I'm going to say add QTMGC. I'm going to go for the very slow preset because I'm after the highest quality. I'm going to click OK. I make ProRes because I'm wanting to use it in the edit, but there might be an occasion when you want to make an MP4 file, but I'm going to make ProRes. I'm going to click OK. Choose either to use the whole of the clip or a trimmed version. I tend to use a trimmed version. So basically, if you've got a bit on the timeline where you're only using a small section, it'll do that. Or if you've got a clip in the bin where you've set an in and out, it'll do that. OK, does it appear in the bin or on the timeline? I tend to do this in the bin rather than the timeline. I tend to think that works a little bit better. 
QTM GZ to ProRes Bosch. And then that gives me an option in here to deinterlace QTM GC to ProRes. I won't set it going because I've done enough videos on that, but that's how you add stuff into the mat server and how you change it. This, as you'll notice here, this one actually deinterlaces it and then it two times upscales it. And it also makes it 50p as opposed to 25p. So I did another video on how you would change that. A quick summary of that would be, first of all, right click on this and say open folder, which will take you to where it is on the hard drive. Then pop back a little bit till you get to the EDIUS power tools folder. Then go into tools, AVI synth, templates, and then find this thing. Now this is the bit that does the QTM GCing. Now what I like to do is I will right click on that and say edit in notepad. And Bosch, I've got a lot, a lot of stuff here, which might mean not a lot to me, but literally I look through all this, come down to here, which has got the resize written on it. And I just put a little hash in the front. The hash means ignore this line. That's the bit of this particular file that will double the size. And I want to keep it the same size and, and double it afterwards. And this bit here is where if you want to make it into 25p, you would actually put in a comma and then put fpsdivisor equals two. And then I would come up to here and save it. I'm going to leave the first one there because I want to make this into a new batch file. So I'm going to go there, call it QTMGC I don't know, 25p or something and save it and then close that. Because I opened it in notepad, it puts dot text at the end. So I'm going to go and get rid of dot text. And then I'm going to come back to here again, take this again, open folder, which will take me to where that is. And then I'm going to make a copy of that. So just control V, control C, copy and paste. I'm going to change the name of it to 25 and I'm going to edit it. And here I look through all this lot. Again, you might be looking at that and your eyes are glazing over, but I'm looking for this, which is the thing that I just changed the name of. And I'm going to change that to now be 25 P. So I've changed the name there to be the new AVS file that I created. Now you can see I've got in the bat server two versions, my original one and the new one I just made. And I've got the option to do this without resizing and 25 p -ing. So having changed that, right click on it, go to deinterlace. And now you can see I've got two options. I've suddenly got my 25 p one there as well as my original one. Now you didn't have to do that. You could have just used the one that was pre-made, but those are very simple things just to tweak that into something else. And like I say, I like to do sometimes 25p and I like to not resize it. The other thing you might consider as well, I've had this conversation with some people recently, is they are actually making DVDs and Blu-rays. They are filming 50i footage and they're having to make interlaced DVDs and Blu-rays because Blu-rays and DVDs are interlaced. But they're also having to make MP4 files. And MP4 files are deinterlaced. I mean, they can be interlaced, but if you do that, you're probably going to have somebody complaining it doesn't play properly on their computer or something. So really, to make an MP4 file, you need to deinterlace it. Now, with EDIUS, if you wanted to take your final like 50i timeline and deinterlace it. So let me change my project so it is interlaced. Now, if I'm in an interlaced project and I want to print a file, you would come up here. You choose your H.264 or H.265. And what you want to do is to enable conversion, open up the conversion settings at the bottom. And then here you click change video format and say you want to make it progressive, not upper field. This is the way you'd make a progressive MP4 file off an interlaced timeline in EDIUS. And then you'd click export and it would make you a progressive file. But well, that's the simplest way of doing it. The other way of doing it would actually be to just change the project itself from interlaced to progressive. And then when you export it, it'll do a progressive file. But like I said, it'll still do the same deinterlacing that EDIUS always does. The only thing is, EDIUS's deinterlacing isn't that great. For example, looking at this clip, which I've used several times in lots of videos, you can see the diagonals here that you get out of EDIUS. They're just a bit steppy when it does it itself, whereas you want nice, smooth diagonals. Well, you could either deinterlace all the clips on the timeline and replace them, or what you could do is just take your entire timeline like this, go print a file, make up a nice Grass Valley AVI file, HQX, I always go for super fine because it's going to be the best quality. 
I'm going to just tick add it to bin so it goes straight into the bin and I'm going to click export give it a name and then off it goes and makes it because I ticked add to bin a little icon already appears in the bin and I can even see the progress of the encoding in the bin as opposed to having to bother to come and look at the job monitor but this is taking my entire edit and just making a new movie out of it. Now, if you're looking at a high definition timeline and you're looking at an hour, you're probably going to use up 30 or 40 gigs. So make sure you've got space, but it will make you a nice, good quality master. Then to take that and to make it into a nice deinterlaced file, as opposed to using the Edius one, you could find that file, take it off and put it in something else like, say, for example, Handbrake and do it that way, Handbrake being a nice free program, which I've put stuff about on the channel before. But because I've got this QTMGC stuff, I can actually come back to the BAT server and I could say, let's make a new QTMGC with this preset. But instead of making ProRes, I could say make MP4. So it's going to use QTMGC to, to deinterlace it and then MP4 it. I again, choose the entire version or a trim it, put it in the bin. And I've now got QTMGC to MP4. Of course, it's still doubling the size, which, you know, if I'm on a high definition timeline, I really don't want to double the size of it. But I can very simply take that thing, edit it and change it to QTMGC 25P again, given that I've made up a 25P, what they call AVI synth script, but this AVS file, I've made up one of those. So if I now point it to that, come into my bin, right click and choose the QTMGC to MP4, that's going to deinterlace it and make an MP4 file for me all in one hit. So you're taking it off to handbrake because I don't have any control over the bit rates or anything, but it's all set to do a nice and decent file. You might want to try that out if you've got EDS 11 because you'll probably get a better result than you will using the print to file directly without once you've made up the bat server without too much extra effort. And by the way, I, I said you could also use handbrake, which I do have on this system, which is free and does very good quality and I've used it for donkey's years. If I was to use handbrake, pop that into there. I can do the same thing in handbrake. I can come over to filters and choose deinterlacing and choose one of these. I'd probably go for Yadisf, yet another deinterlacing filter. So I'd probably go for that one. It doesn't do QTMGC. Yadisf is pretty good. I just think QTMGC does a better job. I know not everybody agrees with me, but I think it does. But obviously this is another way of doing it. I could pop it in here and then I can do things like control bit rates and all sorts of things. I'd make sure it's the same frame rate as the original. I'd come in here and put an average bit rate of something like I know, 9,000 for high definition. I would check the audio, probably put that a bit higher. And then I'd set it going, might save myself a preset. I've done a video about using handbrake, which is also on the channel. So you can see that there, but this is another way of taking an AVI file, an interlaced AVI file out of EDIUS and then deinterlacing it. But you don't have to use Handbrake, you could just directly use the old BAT server as well. Anyway, I hope you find that video useful. Obviously, like the video, subscribe to the channel just to make sure that when there's a new video about a new update that you get notified. Don't forget to go to the website www.dvctraining.co.uk or if you've got a question, email me david at dvctraining.co.uk. I hope you found the video useful and I'll see you next time.